There are some major damning facts about suspected killer James Brenner who has been recently charged in the murder of 19-year-old Dylan Rounds. Dylan Rounds disappeared on May 28, 2022. He had dreams of having his own farm, which he was beginning to see the fruits of his labor. The day he disappeared, he talked to his grandma in the morning and told her that he needed to get his grain truck out of the rain to protect his seed. That's the last time his family ever heard from him again. The actual search for Dylan began two days later, after his parents, Candace Cooley and Justin Rounds, found out about their missing son. They traveled to the farm and right away, things didn't add up. They pushed for their son's case to be properly investigated, but they had a heck of a time with the authorities and it's been a frustrating journey and process. In July of 2022, two months after Dylan was reported missing, authorities officially named a suspect. James Brenner, a.k.a. Jim. Jim was known to be squatting on property near Dylan's farm in Lucin, Utah. It's a remote ghost town. Jim also had worked for Dylan. Now, Dylan's dad, Justin, once overheard a conversation between Jim and Dylan and warned Dylan that Jim wasn't his friend based on that single conversation. Dylan kind of laughed it off thinking, you know, he's just a grumpy old man. Now on June 7th, Jim was interviewed by the FBI and a week later, they searched the property where he was squatting. They found ammo, an ignition cap, black powder, and speed rounds. These were said to be materials all for the purpose of muzzle loading antique style guns. But investigators didn't find any weapons at that time in this trailer and didn't seize the materials they did find. Later on, the investigators found out that James Brenner allegedly reached out to a friend to ask him to safe keep some of his weapons, including three black powder guns. This is according to the affidavit. Now, Jim told a friend in the affidavit, it says DH, that he needed to safe keep some of his weapons for his own safety because the last time he had trouble with the law, he says they took everything from him. Well, yeah, he wasn't supposed to have these guns. And Jim told this friend he didn't want the things he had left to be taken again. So the friend turned the weapons over to the authorities and also told them that Jim had brought him a 22 caliber rifle. After all this happened on June 29th, this is a month after Dylan's disappearance, Jim ended up in jail on unrelated charges back from 2021. He was a felon in possession of a firearm. He has a very lengthy criminal history. He was sentenced in 2012 to 33 months in prison after being convicted of, yep, you guessed it, being a felon in possession of a firearm. He also had previous charges of something that was called malicious wounding and malicious shooting. That was downgraded from attempted murder. So Jim wasn't supposed to be possessing firearms, but he did. You'll also see why that's important in a minute. But on Friday, March 3rd of 2023 this year, James Brenner was officially charged with the murder of young Dylan. He was charged with aggravated murder, which is a first degree felony. He was also charged with abuse or desecration of a dead human body, which is a third degree felony. And now with the documents released, the evidence puts James Brenner, AKA Jim, in a very serious situation. There's still one obstacle though, Dylan still hasn't been located, even though they don't need a body to convict. So we are gonna get into the details today and see what the authorities have on James Brenner and connect some dots. We're gonna talk about the seven damning facts in the case. So now let's get into it. Number one, brand new information, good old DNA that belonged to Jim was on Dylan's discarded boots. Now these boots were discarded behind a dirt pile and found by Dylan's parents. Dylan's mom, Candace said they just looked like they were tossed and they were found near Brenner's place behind a dirt pile that was a hundred yards from where Dylan's grain truck was parked. When tested, they found both Dylan's and Jim's DNA on it. Candace said Brenner has admitted he's the one who took the boots out there. He said he found them by the shed on the property, picked them up, moved them by his camper somewhere, and then decided Dylan wasn't coming back for them. She says those boots were not in that desert during a rainstorm on Friday, that's the day before Dylan disappeared. Those boots didn't even have dust or mud on them. I bet you Brenner put them there on Monday, which is two days after Dylan disappeared. And she says when he knew we were coming out and he had to get rid of them. Let's just have a quick chat about these boots. Why discard the boots? 
Was this some poor attempt to set up an abduction theory by James Brenner? Was he ticked off that it was a statement piece by chucking them behind the pile? What do you think? Let me know below. Number two, Dylan's phone was found at the bottom of the pond and featured some damning evidence against James Brenner. Now, about the phone, the last signal from Dylan's phone came from the Lucent Pond and the pond was drained. At the bottom of that pond was Dylan's phone. Now, according to Dylan's phone records, it showed there were two calls that morning, one to his grandmother, and we now learned that it, there was one to James Brenner. Dylan's movements also showed that he was on the property where Brenner was squatting that morning where that grain shed is. Jim was also at the pond that day of Dylan's disappearance. Justin Rounds, Dylan's dad, also said right after that last phone call to my mom, who's Dylan's grandma, Dylan called Jim Brenner. Then he went up to Jim Brenner's, the phone did, and was around there for a while. Then it went back to Dylan's place and then back to Jim Brenner's. Then Brenner stopped by the pond on his way to a friend's for lunch. Now Candace, Dylan's mom said, he placed himself at the pond the day Dylan disappeared and Dylan's phone was found in the pond. Number three, there's a time-lapse video with Brenner on Dylan's phone that's a dang miracle. The video was recorded inside Jim's trailer at 7.27 a.m., a half an hour after Dylan talked to his grandma. Dylan was at the gate to enter the shed around 6.57 a.m., and according to Candace, she said everything happened within the 32-minute window. Nothing else was recorded on that phone, and Dylan's parents are baffled how it even recorded. Candace said, how did that phone start recording? It has driven us crazy. I'm pretty sure when Brenner took the phone, he just hit the wrong button or had a wrong swipe and had no clue. Then it started recording. Candace also did say in an interview with East Idaho News, she said that she has an iPhone 8 back at the house and she said she was trying to see how that could have recorded and she said it's easily um, able to record just by a wrong swipe. Now, what was shocking about the video to the parents was the cold heartedness they said of it. So what was on the video? It showed Jim Brenner with blood stains on his arms and his shirt as he cleaned a gun, complete with a timestamp. It's not good for a felon who isn't supposed to have guns, is it? Dylan's dad, Justin, said, when I heard about the video of him washing the blood off his hands and the gun, it hit me hard. I was so angry and I wasn't supposed to tell anybody about it. It was just hard. How crazy is that? This phone was turned on at the time that it was needed. How? It reminds me of the Delphi case, which you can see below, where a video was recorded of a suspect unknowingly, and that piece of evidence has been crucial to the investigation. And here we are with this case, with this video evidence of the alleged killer with a timestamp and the gun Jim's not supposed to have, and he's cleaning it with blood on him. Now we know why Candace all along since the beginning said he should have been arrested since day one. Now number four is there was DNA of Dylan's that, that was also found on Jim's shirt that he wore in the video. Number five, Brenner was interviewed and what he said lined up with forensic evidence. According to court documents, it states that Brenner was interviewed and made several claims that corroborated forensic evidence in addition to making numerous demonstrably false statements. Despite a thorough investigation and extensive search, the victim's body was not recovered due to Brenner removing and concealing it. And speaking of body, number six, Brenner has knowledge of where the body is. In an interview with East Idaho News, Candace Cooley said that the family was approached with a plea deal in exchange for where Dylan's body was, and they vetoed it. And number seven, emptying out potential evidence out of the shed. According to the parents, a few days after Dylan disappeared, Justin and Candace, along with law enforcement, watched James Brenner spend some time in the shed. Candace said, Brenner pulled the grain truck out on his own and cleaned it. He was cleaning the shed with law enforcement and us there watching him. I saw him take out four garbage bags and put them in the back of his pickup. The parents also observed the shed full of trash and empty beer cans later because he's saying he's cleaning it 
Yeah, right. Candace said he wasn't cleaning up garbage that day. Whatever he took out in those bags was to hide right under law enforcement noses. And they even said at one point, I remember Candace saying that law enforcement was basically saying, well, we don't, you know, we don't want to upset Jim too much because we're on his property, which it wasn't his property. And James Brenner wasn't supposed to have firearms. And here we are, he has firearms and he's cleaning a gun with blood all over him. Now, Jim Brenner's arraignment is on April 24th, and the family will be in court. And when asked what should happen to James Brenner if he's found guilty, Candace says right now he's facing the death penalty, and I think we'll end up pushing it the whole way. There's one thing that still is a head scratcher. What I'd like to know, there was a phone call that seemed to be a diversion two days after Dylan went missing and the parents were called and it took them on a goose chase, basically saying they knew where Dylan was and that he's being beat up somewhere and that turned out to be a farce. So why the diversion by somebody else? That still gets me. What do you think? Do you have a theory on that? And there's a few other things. Like there was Dylan's gun missing and it was missing from his trailer, but yet a few days after the gun reappears back in Dylan's trailer. Well, somebody put it there. Also, Dylan's key fob for his truck was gone and then it mysteriously reappears. Also, Dylan's truck was said to be locked that's not normal. The seat was pushed up, not normal. And actually the truck was washed and the tires, but not the wheel wells. So it's going to be interesting where the parents actually find Dylan. And they said they're going to be looking for him after the snow melts and that they'd be able to find him. They basically said, you know, screw James Brenner. We're not doing a plea deal to find our son. We'll find him. To check out more videos on the case, click right here. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.